Hi. So, oh my gosh, like as soon as I go live, I get super nervous and like I forget everything I planned to say. No, just kidding. I have lots to talk about. So, right now I am in the Soma and I am with these fabulous ladies. Brett in an action shot. So, Brittany is the CEO of Jomper, which has been my project for the past six months. We're designing jumpsuits and rompers. And then this lovely photographer lady is, do you know about Caitlin? Or? Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're doing a photo shoot for the power suit and the romper, which will be available for pre-sale probably like within the week. So it's really exciting. Um, so why I'm out and about for this topic today of inspiration is to talk to you a little bit about sourcing inspiration a little bit more like meaningful and personal than just if you were to go online or Pinterest and find pictures. Oh, by the way, I made these <laughs> By the way. <laughs> I should explain like why I'm trying rectangles and triangles attached to my ears. <laughs> So the jumper color palette is like green and neon pink and black as well, but it's like very electric and very like um, like geometric too. Um, so then, yeah, I'll get into inspiration in a minute. I'll talk a little bit more about why we're in the Soma because that does tie into inspiration. So jumper is kind of a very tech forward brand. Like all of our fabrics are moisture wicking and small proof and um, we have like features that are like friendly to like the startup lifestyle. So we also are a startup company. So features like uh, like holes in the pockets to like put your earbuds and stuff. So like for us, the Soma, which is kind of home to a lot of startups, is a great place to source inspiration because it kind of inspires us to create um, and the whole like startup culture kind of inspires to be like innovative and new and just a little bit more kind of lucrative and risk taking. So the Soma is a great place to for us to get inspiration and also to do our photo shoot. So, so here is the thing with sourcing inspiration for your personal style. And um, it's that you want to not necessarily like consider like imagery that is like beautiful or like already picture perfect or already out there like it's great to like look at magazines or look at like fashion and beauty blogs for things to inspire you um, just more so to like be aware of what's out there maybe be aware of the trends and what other creatives are making or what other people are doing but um, the thing is like when it comes to like something in regards to like your style and something that's personal to you you want to go a little bit deeper like you want to find the more subtle things that inspire you or kind of look to like things that are really meaningful to you and start to source imagery around that sorry these girls are we're trying to climb the space station <laughs> uh Brit's like pretty ridiculous let's just put it like that <laughs> Actually, you guys want to watch her try to climb the space station? This is definitely inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> so she's wearing the peplum jumper, so it's a more like fitted for feminine silhouette. I have the power suit on, so it's let's see, it has like lots of the stitchy, and I made this as well. Um. So let me just take a look at the comments <laughs> just because I'm still learning this and okay I see like some people you guys go ahead and say hi or leave a comment um, and ask me a question I can get to it um, so back to inspiration so I'm going to show you a little bit about what to look for when you're or kind of a new perspective to look for when you're out taking pictures. So when I am out taking pictures, like I, and this is kind of how you can start to view the world differently as like a designer too. Like you start to see like 
different components that might inspire like something that you're going to design in the future. So we are moving in the photo shoot. So when I'm out and about, I look for, uh, probably first and foremost, I look for shapes and geometry. That's kind of happened with me more so that I've been studying like minimalism and the city is great for that because there's like a lot of like modern architecture so like um, what do you guys can you talk about a little bit about what you look for when you're looking yes. for like a location for like a photo shoot or like ah, yeah well so sometimes I plan on photo shoots like to the team like we're gonna do this this and this but today Andrea was like let's just go find inspiration I'm like that's so easy you can literally just walk down the street and start to um, you know, just just point out things that you like. So for instance, we found this place that looks like a space station and that really fits our <laughs> brand, like just kind of taking it <laughs> to the next level. And um, <laughs> our photographer luckily has a good eye. She's the one who found it. Um, so that's what's fun about a creative team is like you're constantly inspired and pushed to kind of a different edge than you would find on your own or find from other brands. So yeah, I'm inspired by Soma because it's like grungy and and mm -hmm. modern, which is crazy. <laughs> so she's talking a little bit about how she styled, like her brand styling for Jumper has a very kind of defined, like futuristic sort of thing. But Britt, do you, while we're walking, <laughs> do you want to talk a little bit walking about how it also talking. inspires your personal style? So my personal style, I think, is rooted in childhood and like this nostalgia of just playing and always like doing whatever I feel like doing at that moment. So Jumper. Jumper enables me to do what I want to do, so it's like moisture wicking, and um, you know, it looks like you can wear it to work, but I can actually go play basketball in this because it's made out of athletic material. So my personal style just kind of embraces the moment. Um, my favorite pair of pants are like fringe pants because I feel like a cowboy <laughs> when I'm wearing them. <laughs> um, so yeah, just kind of silly. She also likes 70s. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you'll see the pictures I've been taking on this walk, like, after the live and stuff tomorrow and the next day when I go into kind of the next topic of what to do with, like, your imagery and inspiration that you source, but I will kind of show you, like, some of the things that, like, Catherine has been taking pictures of, like, like she just found, for example, like, this sort of, like, all this is is, like, an apartment gate, but it has kind of an interesting texture it has kind of the lines here and the texture here and the grid here so like something like that is what you start to look for and take pictures of like details like that that have maybe some sort of element that inspires you um so yeah like even this isn't necessarily the best location in san francisco for it but i'm here i can show you like i look a lot to like the art deco and like the iron work kind of like here there's some iron work shapes and I'll even just take pictures of like the smallest detail like when you zoom in you start to see like subtle textures and shapes that could all be a source of inspiration so apart from shapes and structure the next thing that I really look for are colors so in maybe a few days probably early next week I'm going to show you how to do a color palette so you can already start to consider what your color palette is um, now as you take images so um, my color palette is pretty much monochromatic apart from metallics if you guys know me you know how much I love metallics um, but I am adding for summer like kind of some more nude some more pinks um, and I also because I part of my lifestyle is going to like techno and like house music shows I'm really inspired by like laser light colors so I'm trying to find more imagery that has like those like vibrant like cobalt blues and those magentas because I want to incorporate those into my color palette as well so yes <laughs> Even like, I mean, I do actually really like orange. <laughs> Nothing to see. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, like, 
silhouette actually is another thing that starts to really play a role and that you'll see more apparently in the sketchbook process when I do that with you but you can start to form the shapes and use them for like the overall like silhouette that you're going for and so like these kind of concepts around design is what makes like your personal style a little bit more like fashion forward and a little bit more high fashion because it's not just something that is like quick to make in a factory or has been copied by like a fast fashion retailer so like this is kind of what I will show you throughout this whole process of like understanding design and how that relates to like fashion but also just how the kind of subtleties and like can make something more like modern fashion forward so um, I think yeah the other design component is like proportion so and negative space too because that's actually a good thing to also consider when you are taking pictures um, is like the proportion of like maybe the object you are photographing and then the overlying space around it so um, these are all things I'll probably talk you through again when I have more of a visual reference because it is kind of visual but um, yeah just anyone have any thoughts on places that they've been that are really good like to source like inspiration or images I think Oh, sweet, I got a comment. What was the comment, Drea? Hey, girl from Nick. He, he owns Tonic Salon and Spa and Cool. Where's that? Santa Cruz. Nice. Oh, I love Santa Cruz. I just went surfing. And it made me think of, <laughs> it made me think of fashion and user experience design as applied to fashion because no one really thinks about that. Um, so what I mean by UX is like when you wear something, like how does it make you feel? How is it functional? So the surfboard was felt like a natural user experience with the wave as opposed to, I don't know, something that's not natural. Like a surfboard on cement. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Anyways. So that's perfect. <laughs> you can so literally perfect. find inspiration anywhere. And the idea is that you can connect it to something that is relevant to you. And that's what I really do ultimately want you to start thinking about when you develop your personal style that what is the connections that you are making that are relevant to yourself as an individual um so like Brittany's just talking about how she can find a relationship to surfing because it's like such a natural thing that almost like juxtaposes the like concrete industrialness of the city um Actually, I find that a lot with nature because I have kind of gone more like into this industrial and minimal direction, but I still like grew up in the nature and I grew up in the redwoods. So. Yeah. yeah, that's probably a good place to end. So basically, what I want you to do over if you're staying on top of this whole track with me over the next 25 days could extend to longer <laughs> if I get into like computers and interiors and um, which I might do like all the details I might even show you how to like yeah. add like your whole philosophy and stuff into your personal style like more comprehensive like besides just fashion but so what I want you to do go out somewhere that inspires you and I want you to look at the details of the, your surroundings in a different way. Look at the shapes, look at the colors, look at the textures and take pictures. Think about like the surrounding space, think about proportion, think about shapes and how things relate to another and then think about how that is meaningful to you. Um, and then when you find something, like as you find more and more what is meaningful to you, that is kind of the underlying principle of how your personal style will emerge.
Do you guys want to add any final words? Uh, looking for inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know what inspires you guys. But I'm curious, what inspires you that you see every day? What do you when you wake up like? What's inspiring? Is it something in your room, or is it something out the window, or something you made? Yeah. Let us know so we can make our inspiration more inspired by your inspiration. Oh. Ah, oh, that's called deep fashion, guys. <laughs> so I've been working on this theory called deep fashion, and it's <laughs> pushing it. And instead of just having this surfacey thing, like, oh, I'm gonna choose pink lipstick. It's like, no, I'm gonna choose pink lipstick because I'm inspired <laughs> by a pink flower that I saw this morning. And this flower is, in, uh, what's the word, indigenous to San Francisco. So that's why we're using pink. Like, what's the why behind your design instead of just throwing something out there that you think is going to sell. That's that's not the point. The point is to find what you're inspired by and then make something that helps other people feel better or feel more, something more. The end. <laughs> yeah, so well said. Um, I mentioned that yesterday. What is your why? I was super nervous yesterday because it was my first live. But yeah, that's always the, the question is like, what is why are you doing something? Why is it meaningful to you? Because if it doesn't have a place in it for you, then you could probably just kind of edit it out. And that's the same thing I mentioned yesterday as far as editing. But we will get into all of this later. So thank you for watching my second live. And tomorrow we will be going more into inspiration, just a little bit more as far as Pinterest. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, like just sourcing online. And um, then the following day we'll do sketchbook. So for sketchbook, I want you to print out the photos that you take, but I'll talk more about that tomorrow. All right, thank you. I have to figure out how to log off, sorry. <laughs>